I just happened to run across this as I was studying in the Dead Sea Scrolls. I was going through uh, the different uh, Farshas there and where they get their interpretations on scriptural, uh, different scriptures and what they think they actually mean. And while I was doing that, I ran across, of course, uh, Hosea chapter 7. And when I ran across Hosea chapter 7, excuse me, chapter 8, verse 7, uh, very, very popular scripture. I, I've taught on this scripture before, but it made me think of a modern technology that is employed today that perhaps this is really what it was implied back. Uh, well, gosh, that's been almost 3,000 years ago that Hosea was, was written. So I wanted to share this with you and just, uh, you know, kind of let you think about this as well. Uh, chapter 8, verse 7, here we have it right here. For they sow the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind. It hath no stock, the bud that shall yield no meal. If so, it be, if so, be it yield, stranger shall swallow it up. Now, I really want you to think about this, right? Kiruach, itzaru, okay? If they sow the wind, right? In other words, they're going to put seeds in the wind. They shall reap a whirlwind or a storm is what it's speaking, speaking about. Uh, if not, they do. Not like just a tornado. So if they sow they will reap it. It's talking about a storm. All right. So if you if you put seed in the wind, okay, that's literally, and it's seeds. It's not a singular seed. It's a plural seed. It's multiple seeds. All right. If, in other words, literally, if he seeds the wind, then you're going to reap a storm all right there are earthquakes and divers di divers places there was earthquakes and major like catastrophes in these days right? but then it says it hath no stock the bud that shall yield no meal and if so it be yield strangers shall swallow it up so it's almost as if they has no stock. The bud that shall yield no meal. And if it did have it, it would just be swallowed up by the strangers. There is a drought in Israel. Because at first I began to think of this like in the modern terms of, of cloud seeding, as we call it today. Then cloud seeding creates rain. Even so, it'll even create rain in an area that there is no rain. So I always look at the host body system here inside what may be going on. But if, like if it was sown, then you're going to reap the, the whirlwind. But it would be something that, if it's not, then you're not going to have any food. And I think of this like in the modern terms of, of cloud seeding, as we call it today, then cloud seeding creates rain. Even so, it'll even create rain in an area that there is no rain. So if there's a drought, well, let's see. Hosea 8. I want to get the context of what I'm even talking about. Let's start with Ephraim's iniquity. When I would heal Israel, the iniquity of Ephraim is uncovered, and the evil deeds of Samaria, for they deal falsely. The thieves enter. The thieves enter in, bandits raid outside, and they do, they do not consider in their hearts that I remember all their wickedness. Now their deeds are all around them, they are all before my face. With their wickedness they make 
the king led and the princes with their lies. But they make the king glad. That's all that matters with them. They are all adulterers, like an oven heated by the baker, who ceases to stir up the fire from the kneading of the dough until it is leavened. On the day of our king, the princes became sick with the heat of wine. He stretched out his hand with scoffers. He stretched out his hand with mockers, and he joins hands with the mockers. There is a conspiracy with traitors. For their hearts are like an oven as they approach their plotting. Their anger smolders all night. They, they're still battling with their, that, uh, their enemy inside of them. In the morning, it burns like a flaming fire. All of them are hot like an oven, and they consume their rulers. All their kings have fallen. None of them calls on me. Ephraim mixes himself with the nations. Don't forget to assemble the assembly of yourselves. Ephraim mixes himself with the peoples. Ephraim has become a cake unturned. Strangers devour his strength. Foreigners sap his strength. Foreigners consume his strength. Yet he does not know it. Gray hairs also are sprinkled on him. Yet he does not know it. Though the pride of Israel testifies against him, yet they have not returned to the Lord their God, nor have they sought him for all of this. So Ephraim has become like a silly dove without sense. They call to Egypt, they go to Assyria. When they go, I will spread my net over them. I will bring them down like the birds of the sky. I will chastise them in ordinance with the proclamation of their assembly. Woe to them, for they have strayed from me. Destruction is theirs, for they have rebelled against me. I would redeem them, but they speak lies against me. And they do not cry to me from their hearts. When they wail in their beds, for the sake of grain and new wine, they assemble themselves, they turn away from me. Although I trained and restrained, I trained and strengthened their arms, yet they devise evil against me. They turn, but not upward. They turn, but not upward. They are like a deceitful bow. They are like a treacherous bow like a faulty bow their princes will will fall by the sword because of the insolence of their tongue this will be their derision in the land of Egypt so that's Ephraim what's what about before there Israel and Judah are unrepentant that's a short one. Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn us, but he will heal us. He has wounded us, but he will bandage us. He will revive us after two days, like two, two years. He will raise us up on the third year that we may live before him. So let us... Let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. His going forth is as certain as the dawn. So you can, you can count on him, a continuous stream. And he will come to us like the rain, like the spring rain watering the earth. What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? For your loyalty is like a morning cloud and like the dew which goes away early. Therefore I have hewn them in pieces by the prophets, I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and the judgments on you are like the light that goes forth. For I delight in loyalty rather than sacrifice, and in the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. But, like Adam, they have transgressed 
the covenant. There they have dealt trust, uh, treacherously against me. What is that? Gilead? Gilead? Gilad? Is a city of wrongdoers tracked with bloody footprints. And as raiders wait for a man, so a band of priests murder on the way to Shechem. Surely they have committed lawlessness, a lewdness, atrocities, their wicked schemes. Surely they have committed crime. So bands of priests, they murder on the road. So they're murdering on the road. In the house of Israel, I have seen a horrible thing. Ephraim's harlotry is there. Israel has defiled itself. Also, O Judah, there is a harvest appointed for you. When I return the fortress of my people, Israel will reap the the whirlwind. Israel will reap the whirlwind. Put the trumpet to your lips. Like an eagle, the enemy comes against the house of the Lord because they have transgressed my covenant and rebelled against my law. Some have that trumpet that they blow. They put it to their lips in order to do that. And others are just an instrument. Like an eagle, the enemy comes against the house of the Lord because they have transgressed my covenant and rebelled against my law. They cry out to me, my God, we of Israel know you. We know you. We acknowledge you. Israel has rejected the good. The enemy will pursue them. They have set up kings but not by me. They have appointed princes, but I did not I did not know it. With their silver and gold, they have made idols for themselves that they might be cut off. He has rejected your calf, O Samaria, saying, My anger burns against them. How long will they be incapable of innocence. How long will it be to the error they attain to innocency? How long will it be? How long will they be incapable of purity? So he's rejected your calf. And if you're trying to sow a calf onto a body, a host body. My anger burns against them. How long will they be incapable of innocence? For from Israel is even this, a craftsman made it, a metal worker, iron mixed with clay. So it is not God, surely the calf of Samaria will be broken to pieces. For they sow the wind and reap the whirlwind. If you're sowing something inside of the host body and it produces like rain and and like a sea and, and it becomes a whirlwind, you sow that part of it, you, you'll reap the whirlwind the, uh, whirlwind, whirlwind. The standing grain has no head, has no heads. The standing grain has no head. It will produce no flower. The stalk has no head. Sounds like the stalk's head was beheaded. It has no head. It will produce no flower. Wear it to yield grain, foreigners, as if it did, the foreigners would swallow up, the strangers would swallow it up. 
has no head and it produces no grain so the bud shall yield no meal if there's no fruit per being produced by if there is no if there's a tree there's a, the knowledge of the tree of good and evil but if there's no fruit coming from that tree it's not going to be it's not going to yield any meal either no meal because it's not growing anything because it's not there and it's not productive Israel is swallowed up they are now among the nations like a vessel in which no one delights Israel is swallowed up now they now shall they become be among the Gentiles as of vessels wherein is no pleasure you can't have any more pleasure it's so it's swallowed up there's a drought but they do sow the wind and they reap the whirlwind when I looked at this host body system in in a uh, like an x-ray it just seems like there's some kind of vacuum system up here like a, something that creates a whirlwind and you sew that in so you do sew that you would sew that and you it's cre it creates a, a whirlwind and in a, in a you can make it rain by when that stuff comes out but if, if it's not even there and you were tricked into saying that come get the come get this uh this thing here you know system it will show you what happens with it and you just take this invert that put these over here and then a period of time you you're, you're going to be producing fruit but what if there is no head to it to the stalk and it's not producing any flowers there's, there's no meal and even if there was, the strangers are going to be the ones swallowing it up. So if there's a drought, maybe this is the part where I thought before that if people took on that system, the host body system, and but what they really did was they told you they're building a wall, and all this was going to go on the inside, but they actually didn't, and all they really did was just ate it. Because for they have gone up to Syria like a wild donkey, all alone, Ephraim has hired lovers. Even though they hired allies among the nations, now I will gather them up and they will begin to diminish because of the burden of the king of the princes. They will begin to waste away under the oppression of the mighty king. I keep thinking this camera is the one on, but it's the actual one up here. Since Ephraim has multiplied altars for sin, they have become altars of sinning for him. Though I wrote for him 10,000 precepts of my law, they are regarded as strange thing. <laughs> as for my sacrificial gift, they sacrifice the flesh and eat it. They sacrifice meat and eat it. Though they offer sacrifices as gifts to me, and though they eat the meat, yeah, you know, if they say this is for the Lord, but yet they're eating it, it it's for you. Oh man, the Lord is not pleased with them whatsoever. Now he will, now he's going to remember their wickedness and punish their sins. They will return to Egypt, for Israel has forgotten his maker and built palaces, and Judah has multiplied fortified cities. But I will send a fire on its cities that it may consume its palatial, palatial dwellings. It shall devour her stronghold, 
and that it'll consume their fortresses, their citadels, and shall devour the palaces thereof. Jose announces Israel's punishment. Do not reject, I mean, uh, rejoice, O Israel, with exaltation like the nations, for you have played the harlot, forsaking your God. You have loved harlots, earnings on every threshing floor. Threshing floor and wine press will not feed them, and a new wine will fail them. They will not remain in the Lord's land, but Ephraim will return to Egypt, and in Assyria they will eat unclean food. They will not pour out drink, offerings of wine to the Lord their sacrifices will not please him their blood will be like mourners bread I mean their bread will be like mourners bread all who eat of it will be defiled for their bread will be for themselves alone watch out for the for the, the leaven of that bread it will not enter the house of the Lord What will you do on the day of appointed festivals and on the day of the feast of the Lord? For behold, they will go up because of destruction. Egypt will gather them up. Memphis will bury them. Weeds will take over their treasures of silver. Thorns will be in their tents. The days of punishment have come. The days of retribution retribution have come let Israel know this the prophet is a fool the inspired man is demented because of the grossness of your iniquity and because your hostility is so great the days of visitation are come the days of recompense are come Israel shall know it the prophet is a fool the spiritual man is mad so the prophet is a fool the spiritual man is mad for the multitude of your iniquity and the great hatred that you have because of the magnitude of your guilt and hostility. The prophet is considered a fool, the inspired person, a maniac. Ephraim was a watchman with my God. Ephraim was a watchman with my God, a prophet, yet the snare of a bird catcher. So the bird got caught. Is, is in all his ways, yet a foul snare is on all his ways. Yet snares await him on all his paths, and hostility in the house of his God. So if you if you consider yourself God, you could also have that that hostility that's in the house of, of his God, the hatred. They have gone deep into depravity deeply corrupted themselves, as in the days of Gibeon, a Gibeah. He will remember their iniquity, he will punish their sins. I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. I saw your forefathers as the earliest fruit on the fig tree in its first season, but they came to Baal purer and devoted themselves to shame. And they became as detestable as that which they loved. As for Ephraim, their glory will fly away like a bird. No birth, no pregnancy, and no conception. Yep, I feel like you're talking about no more birth. No more pregnancy, 
no more conception. There will be no more pleasure because it doesn't exist anymore. They ate it up. Uh, they There's no fruit. It won't produce flour. The head's cut off, the stalk. And if, even if it did, they would it would be food for the other race. But it just sounds like it's not there anymore. And you won't have pregnancy. Or at least you won't be able to... The mechanism isn't there anymore. And it's not going to produce children. Ephraim's glory shall fly away like a bird. No birth, no pregnancy, no conception. Though they bring up their children, yet I will bereave them until not a man is left. Not one man is left. It's a bird trap, but in the end, their glory will fly away like a bird. How a bird is gone forever. It's just gone. As for Ephraim, they're glorified. Ephraim will not produce children anymore. Because also, the offspring, in a spiritual sense, you give... You give no more birth. There is no more birth to that system. That there, no one will ever be pregnant again, and no conception will ever happen. Though they bring up their children, yet I will bereave them until not a man is left. I should look for a different word and bereave them of every one. So what if there is not one man left? There's plenty of men walking the planet, but this is for this is for a specific group of people. That there would be no more men left because of the bird trap, and there will be there's gonna be a drought. The drought is there's no production of it. Ephraim, as I have seen, is. Planted in a pleasant meadow like Tyre. But Ephraim will bring out his children for slaughter. But Ephraim shall bring forth his children to the murder. Children to the executor, to, to the slayer. Out to be slaughtered. Which means death. No more fruit. You can still be alive. But they're also bringing you to the murder of your spirit because of your belief system. Give them, O oh Lord, what will you give? Give them a miscarrying womb and dry breast. Give them a miscarrying womb and dry breast. And breasts that are dry. And their evil is at Gilgal, indeed. Well, you know what? Because maybe it's probably best that they never bring into children ever again into this system. Because if you're that wicked and you're bringing in a son of man again from male to female and you're bringing in a child by yourself as a man, that birthing system and then all of a sudden it's just cut off where no more like you're not even ever gonna you don't even have it you don't even have it in there anymore and all their evil is at Gilgal indeed I came to hate them there <laughs> I came to hate them there every evil of theirs is in Gilgal there I began to hate them because of the wickedness of their deeds I will drive them out of my house I will love them no more. All their princes are rebels. Ephraim is stricken. Their root is dried up. There is no fruit being produced as well as spiritually. They will bear no fruit. Even though they bear children, I will slay 
the precious ones of their wounds. Even though they give birth, I will put their beloved children to death. So even if they did give birth, their children will still be slain by the word. Even if they gave offspring, not even actual birth in any system, just a someone's birthed into your system. They, when you are initiated in, as a mason, you're birthed as a mason. You become a son of uh, Lucifer, I think. And how that works. My God will cast them away because they have not listened to him and they will be wanderers among the nations. Retribution for Israel's sin. Israel is a luxuriant vine. He produces fruit for himself. The more his fruit the more altars he made, the richer his hand, the better he made the sac sacred pillars. So he produced fruit for himself, unto himself. Assembled himself together. Israel did. Their heart is faithless. Now they must bear the guilt. The Lord will break down their altars and destroy their sacred pillars. Surely now they will say, We have no king, for we do not revere the Lord. As for the king, what can he do to us? They speak mere words with worthless oaths. They make covenants and judgment sprouts like poisonous weeds in a burrow of the field. The inhabitants of Samaria will fear for the calf of Bethaven. Indeed, its people will mourn on it, mourn for it, and its idolatrous priests will cry over it, over its glory, since it had departed from him. The thing itself will be carried to Assyria as tribute to King Jerob. Ephraim will be seized with shame, and Israel will be ashamed of its own counsel. Samaria will be cut off with her king like a stick on the surface of the water. Also the high places of Avon, the sin of Israel, will be destroyed. Thorn and thistle will grow on their altars. Then they will say to the mountains, cover us, and to the hills, fall on us. From the days of Gibeah you have sinned, O Israel, there they stand. Will not the battle against the sons of iniquity overtake them in Gibeah? When is it my desire, I will ch chastise them, and the peoples will be gathered against them when they are bound for their double guilt? Ephraim is a trained heifer that loves to thresh, that is taught and loves to tread out the corn. But I will come over her fair neck with a yoke. I will harness Ephraim. Judah will plow. Jacob will harrow for himself. Jacob must harrow for himself. Jacob must break up the ground. Jacob will do the final plowing. Now I can see where that's all twisting around. Like you, you, Jacob wrestled with God. So Jacob wrestled with God. The God of heaven, the spirit in heaven, Jacob wrestled with him. You can also wrestle with the gods of the earth and heaven. But if Jacob was wrestling with the true God of heaven, then that would mean that at one point, he was at enmity with God, with the God of heaven. But that would have to be before he even woke up to anything. Because once you start waking up to everything, you're no longer fighting with God anymore. You start battling with the gods of the earth. 
So I will harness Ephraim, Judah will plow out, Jacob will harrow for himself. So with a view to righteousness, reap in accordance with kindness. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord until he comes to rain righteousness on you. You have plowed wickedness, you have reaped injustice, you have eaten the fruit of lies. Because you have trusted in your way, in your numerous warriors and numerous mighty, mighty men. Therefore a tumult, tumult, the roar of battle will rise against your people, will rise among your people, and all your fortress will be destroyed as Shalman destroyed Beth Arbel on the day of battle when mothers were dashed in pieces with their children. Thus, it will be done to you at Bethel because of your great wickedness. At dawn, the king of Israel will be completely cut off. God's judgment, back to, back to 5. I'll just go through 5 to 10. God's judgment on Israel and Judah. Hear this, O priest. Give heed, O house of Israel. Listen, O house of the king. For the judgment applies to you. For you have been a snare at Mizpah and a net spread out on Tabor. The revolters have gone deeply in depravity, but I will chastise all of them. I know Ephraim, and Israel is not hidden from me. For now, O Ephraim, you have played the harlot. Israel has defiled itself, and Israel is not hidden from me. I know all about Ephraim. Their deeds will not allow them to return to their God, for a spirit of harlotry is within them and they do not know the Lord. Moreover, the pride of Israel testifies against him, and Israel and Ephraim stumble in their iniquity. Judah also has stumbled with them. They will go with their flocks and herds to seek the Lord, but they will not find him. He has withdrawn from them. They have dealt treacherously against the Lord, for they have borne illegitimate children. Now the new moon will devour them with their land. If if Lucifer is referred to as the moon, the lesser light to rule the day, and Son of God is the greater light to rule the the nut rule the day, and a and a lesser light to rule the night, which is the moon, when Lucifer becomes a new creature, watch out because that moon will devour them with their land. Blow the horn in Gibeah, the trumpet in Ramah. Sound an alarm at Beth Avon behind you, Benjamin. <clears throat> Ephraim will become a desolation in the day of rebuke. Among the tribes of Israel, I declare what is sure. The princes of Judah have become like those who move a boundary. On them I will pour out my wrath like water. Ephraim is oppressed, crushed in judgment, because he was determined to follow man's command. He was determined to go after filth, intent on pursuing idols. Therefore, I am like a moth to Ephraim, and like rottenness to the house of Judah. When Ephraim saw his sickness, and Judah his wound, then Ephraim went to Assyria and sent to King Jerob, but he is unable to heal you, or to cure you of your wound. For I will be like a lion to Ephraim, and like a young lion to the house of Judah. I, even I, will tear to pieces and go away. I will carry away, and there will be none to deliver. 
I will go away and return to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face in their affliction. They will earnestly seek me. 